was going to shoot my special at a theater, but I thought, I came up with all my bits at this place. Why not just shoot it here? And every time I see the store in specials, it's shot in only one of the rooms. The main room, the original room, or the belly room. I wanted to do all three. The hat trick. And I didn't want to dress it up or smoke it out. I just wanted to show the place for what it is. Home. sometimes and uh, sometimes I bring comics on the road this guy I used to bring on the road and he, and he got too strong I can't follow him he's really fucking funny this guy is literally one of the best joke writers in this country I love him Fihi Manwar everybody clap your hands Bobby Lee everybody yes You guys having a good pandemic so far? <laughs> you having a good pandemic? Yeah, I got COVID. Um, right now, right now I have COVID. <laughs> no, I got it early. I got like COVID 1.0. <laughs> when everyone was scared and it was mass hysteria. It was weird getting it at that time. I felt like the guy who jizzed first at a gangbang. <laughs> you know, I just blew my COVID load and I was like, I'll just be over here. <laughs> Let me know and I could join up again. <laughs> Anybody else get it? No? Yeah, remember when the vaccines first came out? They were like, get any of them. <laughs> They're all good. And then they were like, okay, J&J's tap water. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we fucked up. It's as effective as making a wish. <laughs> but you only need one, so... <laughs> Did anybody else think Moderna was a Tyler Perry movie for a while? <laughs> I was like, oh, he made another one? That's cool. I think we all thought we were going to be done with COVID, and like now we're realizing it's like the Fast and the Furious. <laughs> this is just a part of our lives. There's 14 of them. And it's taught us at the end of the day, it's all about family. <laughs> I don't like understand the people who get so angry about masks, you know? They'll be like, no, fuck that shit, I'm not gonna wear it. Like if a place wants you to wear it, just wear it. They'll be like, no, I don't believe in that shit, I'm not gonna wear it. Be like, just, it's easy to do. It makes everyone happy, it's the path of least resistance. Like you know how many times growing up, I would go to my white friend's family's house for dinner and have to pray to Jesus? <laughs> I just did it. It was way easier to do it. I wasn't like, no, fuck that shit. I don't believe in that. I'm not doing that shit. Tell me when you're done, then I'll join you. No, I just held hands and I was like, thank you, Jesus. I even did extra shit. I was like... But I crossed my toes. So Allah wouldn't burn me. When I when I get up there. It's a religious loophole. It works, guys. I love religious loopholes. Like, some girls will be with their boyfriend, and they'll be like, you can only do it in my butt. I'm saving myself. And the guy's like, so he's got upgraded to first class? <laughs> okay. But that's such weird logic. Like, you think when you die, God's gonna be like, Allison... I'm so glad you did it in the butt all those years. Thank you. That's what I meant. God loves splitting hairs. That's my jam. Read the Bible like you're a lawyer. I know all the loopholes. Christians are like super nice though, very lovely people. A lot of times they'll be like, I'm gonna pray for you. 
or I'm going to pray for you. And that's nice. It's a nice thought. But it's not that much work <laughs> when you think about it. Because it's the end of the night, you know, they're under the covers. And they're like, dear Lord, please watch over the Thompson family. <laughs> it's like three seconds out of your day. You need more Muslim friends. Like, a Muslim person is praying for you five times a day. <laughs> Muslims are like the AR-15 of thoughts and prayers. <laughs> Just getting lit up with prayers. <laughs> Just a full clip of prayers. America is, is uh, it's very Christian. It's a very Christian nation. Like, if you play high school football, you're going to be praying to Jesus. <laughs> like, that's just part of it. What I want to do, I want to get really good at coaching high school football and then make the team pray to Allah before the game. <laughs> I'm like, bring it in, guys. Here we go. Hands in. Dear Allah, help us commit jihad on the other team. <laughs> Allah Akbar on three. <laughs> Allah Akbar. The parents are like, he wins games. <laughs> I don't like it, but we're state champs. <laughs> you kids want to win or you want to pray to Jesus? <laughs> I'm curious, any Middle Eastern or South Asian people here tonight? Yeah, right here. One thing that I've noticed about Middle Eastern and South Asian families is like they like to keep up appearances. Like no matter how fucked up things might be going in the family, they like to create the illusion that things are great. White families are too honest. White families will be like, Travis is addicted to meth. <laughs> we don't know what to do. Middle Eastern family would never do that. They would, they would spin it. They'd be like, Abdul cleans the house constantly. <laughs> oh, where did your TV go? Abdul started his own business. <laughs> Already he sell our TV for us. He sell our microwave. He is top salesman. <laughs> Abdul donate his teeth to charity. <laughs> so he has no teeth. His heart is too big. My parents, they're from Afghanistan, and I was born in Seattle. <laughs> so I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, guys, you know one word, that's nice. <laughs> Are you Afghan? No, that's all right. <laughs> yeah, I did Rosetta Stone for a week, but now I picked that up. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Where are you from? Uh, I'm from LA, but I mean, I want, I want to be. Here. Okay. I like that's the, the white answer. Like, I'm from LA. <laughs> I'm from LA, guys. For, for... Yeah. My parents are from Afghanistan. I was born in Seattle. And it, it sucks because, like, everyone expects me to know everything about Afghanistan. But I wasn't born here, so I'm just as dumb as you guys. <laughs> People will be like, oh, the Taliban are coming back into the country. Like, what's your take on that? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, they're like bad dudes. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> I'm like, go home, Taliban. <laughs> you, you could print that. I don't know if you guys saw the Taliban give a press conference when they took over this time around. It was the weirdest shit. They, they were at a conference table with a bunch of microphones. Then I swear to God, they had hand sanitizer on the table. <laughs> like, that, that kind of takes the bite out of the Taliban. <laughs> Just to be like, get to America. <laughs> I'm gonna visit my parents. I'm gonna fly. This is a PSA for everyone here. When you fly, wait to get off the plane. <laughs> it's not that hard. <laughs> But for some reason, as soon as the wheels touch down, every motherfucker gets up, like... <laughs> for 40 minutes, this guy's like, can you believe this shit? There's gotta be a better way. He goes to the chiropractor the next day, like, it happened again, I couldn't wait. Can you... You know when the wheels touch down, I get up. That's the deal, okay? 
I love people watching at the airport. I love the guys who never take their neck pillow off. <laughs> they look like a Star Wars senator. <laughs> I have to get to the Galactic Senate. Southwest has direct flights to Nabu Nabu. At LAX, they always have that drug sniffing dog, you know, and it has that vest that says, do not pet. That's how you know that dog shouldn't be a cop. If, if petting it will blow up the whole operation. <laughs> Imagine a cop pulled you over. He's like, you know why I pulled you over? And you start petting him and he's like... <laughs> Stop it! Start rubbing his belly. Like, oh, I'm gonna let you off with a warning. Get out of here. Oh, he had a tennis ball, Sarge. What was I supposed to do? I don't, I'm in the minority here. I'm not a drug guy. Like, I don't like weed. I don't like marijuana. I just get scared. I just get really scared and paranoid and terrified. And it sucks if I do it at a party or something. I have to like, I don't want people to know that I'm losing my mind. So I have to pretend I'm having a good time. It's like, ooh, this is that sticky icky. Is this indica or is this sativa? Is anybody else having a hard time swallowing? Or is it like, somebody fuck with the thermostat? What's going on? Uh, I, I love this, I love, yeah. This is that good shit. You do get to have weed thoughts and that's fun, you know, just stuff you would never think about sober. I was thinking about balding while I was high. Balding is so weird. Balding's like God giving you a haircut you don't want. <laughs> it's like a really slow haircut over the course of your life. You sit down, you're like, hey, what's up, God? I just want a little off the top. And God's like, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put two triangles down the side of your head. Then we're gonna put a skin yarmulke right there on the back. It's gonna be super oily all the time. It's gonna bounce hella light. Chicks dig it. Trust me, I'm God. I feel like the hair transplant is, is men's boob job. That's our boob job. But a lot of times dudes are just like trying to, trying to look less bald. Like they still look bald after the procedure. They're like, here's my 401k. Make me look like I did three months ago, at least. Just give me some strands back. Women, when you get boob jobs, you'll go from an A cup to double Ds. Like if guys got hair transplants the way women get boob jobs, they would just show up to work with Dragon Ball Z hair. <laughs> What's up, fellas? You notice anything different about me? <laughs> Your boy got the Goku package. <laughs> I fight in the sky now. I was at a diner the other day. I always love when the waiter comes up to the table and he's like, hey guys, uh, just let you know, I'm about to take my break, but Brad here, I'm gonna take care of you guys. <laughs> like if you didn't say anything, I would have no idea. <laughs> Like this guy thinks he's way more memorable than he really is. <laughs> he thinks I'm gonna be eating and be like, ah, 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 who are you? Where's Jacob, my waiter? I don't know a Brad. Oh, Jacob, some strange man dressed like you is refilling my Diet Coke. Well, tell me you're going on break next time. Hey, I thought something bad happened to you, God forbid. Announce your breaks. Watching this prison dog on Netflix, you know when someone goes to prison, they'll be like, yo, don't drop the soap. <laughs> Everyone's heard that, don't drop the soap, right? It's, why? Somebody tell me why. Why don't you do it? <laughs> Butt sex? Star student over here, yes. And everyone just buys that. They go, yeah, that makes sense. I've always thought this, though, like, here's the logic flaw in that. Like, you think of a guy in prison is willing to rape you. The only thing holding him back... <laughs> <laughs> is closed butt cheeks? <laughs> like, how lazy is this rapist? <laughs> He's like, I'll do it, but only if it's easy. <laughs> He's lathering up, like, I want to butt fuck that guy. <laughs> but his cheeks are closed. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> then he hears the soap drop, and he's like, Hello. 
Also, the guy bending over to pick up the soap, as soon as he feels anything graze his butt, even a gust of wind, he's gonna be like, hey, yo. What the fuck's going on here? Like, you're still gonna have to fight this guy. It's not gonna be a walk in the park. He's not gonna be like, ah, you got me. <laughs> rules are rules. Just make it quick. All right, you guys have been so much fun. There's coming to the comedy store. It's the best club in the world. Who do we got? Oh! 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 <laughs> I love this guy. He's one of my favorites. Give it up for the hilarious Theo Vaughn, everybody. Y'all give it up right there for Fahim Anwar. I think that's good. You know people yeah. on TikTok and shit that yeah. I have no idea. I guess it helps if you like have your fans. Oh. Before they changed, they did the whole remodel. Oh, I love it. No. You don't like it? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, it was in the main room. I was dating early pandemic. I liked dating early pandemic. I was saving so much money because everything was closed. <laughs> it was like dating in the 50s. I was like, we could go for a walk. <laughs> we could feed the ducks this Saturday. I know where all the hottest ponds are. I had to pretend like I was bummed out. Like, man, I wish we could get overpriced sushi. Fuck. When can we go clubbing again? I love dancing for three weeks until I get ghosted. <laughs> I don't let myself get ghosted. I keep texting every week <laughs> for like three years. I'm like, hey you, me again. Hopefully this year is more chill for you. Just let me know. I'm wide open like I always am. I would do the apps, you know? Like some girls will be on the apps and they'll be like, just here for friends. <laughs> like, why? <laughs> why are you on dating apps for friends? That's like me going on LinkedIn to fuck. <laughs> like, oh, you thought this was a business meeting? <laughs> nah, I'm here to fuck. <laughs> Read my profile, that's on you. It says bachelor's degree and down to clown. It's right there. One time I matched with a girl and then her profile said, just here for friends. So I messaged her, I said, hey, do you think you could take me to LAX? <laughs> a friend would take me, a friend would take me to LAX. What's wrong? I noticed there's a lot of girls, like their profile photo, they would be in front of a brick wall with angel wings. <laughs> Just so many girls have the angel wings photo. It's easy to roll your eyes at it as a guy, but then I thought if there was a wall with Wolverine claws on it, <laughs> every guy would be in front of it like. There'd be a line around the building like, fucking hurry up, dude, it's my turn. <laughs> Let's do some jumping ones. Ugh. Ugh. Airdrop that to me. Oh yeah, fuck yeah. Got sick air on that one. Also, I noticed like some girls are kind of discriminatory on the apps too, you know? They'll be like, if you're under five foot 10, swipe left. <laughs> if you're a fucking midget, bye. <laughs> you know the thing you have no control over? Bye. <laughs> like what happened to body positivity? Like is it good enough for Lizzo, but not Greg? <laughs> Also a little hypocritical when like ladies 
you get to wear makeup every day. Like, at least that guy's 5'9 all the time. <laughs> if it rains, he's not like, Aah. You were four feet tall this whole date? Aah. I didn't think it would rain. You were two kids in a trench coat this whole... This whole time? Fellas, you ever try to meet up with a girl who's out and about? It's like impossible. They'll be like, hey, we're at this club, come. And you're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> we left, we're at this club. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm parking. So. It was lame, we left. Oh. Like now it's not even a date, I'm just Dog the Bounty Hunter. <laughs> Trying to track down Stephanie. You guys have any leads? <laughs> I think, ladies, you just get hit up so much. You get so many texts, so many DMs, so many messages that as a guy, when you're messaging with a girl, the margin of error before she disqualifies you <laughs> is so fucking small. <laughs> ladies, you're like a deer grazing in the forest. <laughs> And then you get an exclamation point and you're like. <laughs> you're like no, 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 come back, no! No, it was a mistake, I'm not that excited. <laughs> or you'll send the wrong emoji. I'm like, dancing guy? You fucking, you sent dancing guy? You don't fucking hit her with this up top. <laughs> you came in hot. <laughs> you scared her away, you gotta work up to dancing guy. Nothing is worse than sending a girl this <laughs> and then just seeing scene under it. <laughs> She's gonna get married and have kids and this is where you left it. That's <laughs> just sitting in your pocket for eternity. <laughs> I've also found sometimes girls will overestimate how good they are at dancing. <laughs> I was on a date with this girl, she's like, yeah, I'm an amazing dancer. I'm fucking phenomenal. And then I saw her dance and she was just doing this. <laughs> like that's nothing. <laughs> but guys will come up to you and be like, whoa, you're like an amazing dancer. <laughs> Cause they wanna be with you. Like, guys will humor you, you won't humor us. Like, if I'm at the club, like... <laughs> no girls coming up to me like, holy shit, you're like a fucking amazing dancer. <laughs> Are you like a Jabberwocky or something? <laughs> no, I'm self-taught, just YouTube tutorials and like TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Men will humor you, you won't humor us. Like guys will be on a date with a girl and the girl will be like, yeah, you know, I'm a Wiccan. I practice witchcraft. And guys are like, oh my God, that's crazy. Is that like an indoor thing or an outdoor thing? No, I've heard of Wiccans. I've just never met one in real life. That's awesome. That's fascinating, yeah. If I go on a date and say I'm a wizard, The date's over. <laughs> She's not like, when did you get into wizardry? <laughs> so like Gandalf shit? Like, like Merlin is my top five wizard. I was thinking about sex. I think the experience of sex is so different for men compared to women. I think there's way more pressure for guys. Like guys are just trying not to jizz the whole time. <laughs> Sex for guys is like hanging off a cliff. <laughs> like, <clears throat> fuck. <clears throat> no, 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 please, no. And then when you come, you're like, ah, I'm sorry. Ah, I'll do better next time. Don't tell your friends, please don't tell your friends. 
That's every guy's fear every time. Because if you come too quick, the party's over. It's like your dick's the DJ and he's just packing up the records. <laughs> women, women don't have to worry about that. There's no such thing as coming too quick for women. Because if you come, you can keep on having sex. It's not like your vagina just closes up and disappears. <laughs> like, oh, fuck! <laughs> and the guy's like, what the fuck? <laughs> the fuck, where'd it go? And she's like, I'm sorry. <laughs> This usually never happens. I had too much Cabernet. You gotta be nice. Like, no, don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. It happens to a lot of girls. Yeah, ladies, I don't think you appreciate how hard it is for guys to perform. It's like we're constantly worried about coming too quick, and then we're constantly worried about losing our boner, so we're just bouncing between the two the whole time. Like... It's like trying to land on an aircraft carrier. It's tough. I'm also jealous, ladies, you get to give each other sex toys and it's socially acceptable. <laughs> no one bats an eye, it's totally normal. Like, Cindy, I got you the rabbit. You've been stressed. I can't be like, bro, I got you a fleshlight, I want you to fuck the shit out of it, dude. <laughs> you need to jizz more, all right? You're my boy. You work too hard, you need to drain your sack on the house. The fellas pitched in, we want you to use it. Just send us a boomerang of you using it. Oh, go, 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 go. I'm writing for this TV show right now, you know, and like they did a thing on their the TV show's Instagram page where they posted pictures of some of the writers every other day. So they posted a picture of me one day, and then in big bold letters it said he him on it, <laughs> which is cool, but like I didn't ask. <laughs> But it's so big, it looks like I pulled them aside and I was like, <laughs> fucking be sure it says he, him. People gotta know what I'm all about. I feel like he, him is the lowest rung on the pronoun ladder. Like no one gives a fuck about he, him. If there was a group discussion like, hi, I'm Tiffany, I'm she, her, everyone's like, yes. Hey, I'm Caleb, I'm they, them, yes. Hey, I'm Chad, I'm he, him, boo! Boo! <laughs> what do you, fuck pussy? <laughs> Relax. I consider myself an ally, though, you know, of the LGBTQIA plus community. What I like about the plus is it lets you know where they got tired of adding letters. Because <laughs> it was LGBT for the longest time, and then queer people were like, hey, what about us? And then intersex people were like, hey, what about us? And then asexual people were like, hey, what about us? And then some guy was like, I like the fuck watermelons. And they were like, all right, plus! <laughs> uh, just plus, we can't keep doing this, okay? It's insanity, we can't. Have you noticed how woke every company is becoming nowadays. And it's so transparent, it's just because they know they can make money off of it now. Like, where was this shit 20 years ago? They're like, we crunch the numbers and now we support gay people. <laughs> <laughs> we talked to our accountants and they said we could run this ad. <laughs> Some of the commercials will be so woke, it doesn't even make sense. It'll be like a Chase Bank commercial and it's a black guy kissing a Chinese guy in a wheelchair. <laughs> and they have an Indian daughter. <laughs> and you're like, I guess. <laughs> I guess that could happen. <laughs> I'm for it, I've just never seen that in the wild. <laughs> All right, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks for coming out tonight, guys. What a great show you have ahead of you. I know who it is. Oh, you guys are in for a treat. This guy, comedy store favorite, you know him from a ton of shit, you know him from Glow, you know him from his podcast.
guys, ladies and gentlemen, Mark Merritt. Fahim Anwar, ladies and gentlemen, Fahim Anwar. thing that was happening in the 90s. Pam Greer to the Andrew Dice Club. Ah! <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is just so cool, you know? All right, I'll be back. What's up, man? How are you? So, like, to the stage, you guys, you're in for a treat. Please put your hands together for Fahim Anwar! Ross is the weirdest store. Like, who pitched that place? The guy pitching it was he like, what if we combine Macy's and the DMV? <laughs> that's just off top. That, I got plenty more ideas, but that's just like, what about meatballs in Ikea? I just, I'm chock full of these great ideas. Stuff that makes sense. Like Ross isn't even the full name. On the sign, it literally says Ross, dress for less. <laughs> like they could have just called it Ross. But they're like, no, people need to know. People need to know what type of people shop here. It's like, I'm already here. You don't have to turn the knife and just insult me to every car driving by. This motherfucker likes to dress for less. This guy's poor. Don't believe his clothes. He got it at discount rates. Uh, just call it Ross. Poor people talk to each other. We'll figure it out. It'll be like a speakeasy, like, yo, you hear about this Ross? <laughs> Just keep it on the DL. People think that I went to Macy's, but no, I went to Ross. <laughs> yo, is this Ross? <laughs> yeah, all right, get in here. Yeah, you don't need to telegraph it. Like, there's a clothing store called Lane Bryant, and they sell clothes to bigger women, and it's just called Lane Bryant. <laughs> it's not called Lane Bryant Dress for More. <laughs> Can I try these, like, two offensive jokes? Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think the silver lining of being paralyzed <laughs> is that your Jordans always look fresh. <laughs> no. Like, damn dog, every time I see you, you always got the cleanest J's. How you keep them so fresh? <laughs> my, my feet never touch the ground. That's what's up. There's also the added bonus that if you go to Foot Locker and you're like, do you have these in a size nine? And they're like, no, we have them in 13. You could be like, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I'm just slipping them on, really. <laughs> I'm watching Cobra Kai on Netflix. It's a good show. Like, if you're not familiar with it, it's about these kids in high school who get bullied and then they all start learning karate instead of doing the realistic thing of becoming a mass shooter. <laughs> <laughs> like, we're supposed to believe that they all just like learn karate when they get bullied at school. A kid gets bullied in high school, he comes home and he sees his dad's AR-15 and he goes, that's the coward's way out. <laughs> I'm gonna learn Miyagi-Do from a car salesman. 
before the pandemic, I had a week of shows in London. I was doing the Soho Theater. And like while I was out there, there was a mass shooting here in America. London was like, our heart goes out to America. And then the very next day, there was another mass shooting. And they were like, again, our heart goes out to America. <laughs> it was kind of embarrassing as an American out there. It's like when someone sneezes and you're like, God bless you. And then they sneeze again. And you're like, God bless you. By the eighth sneeze, you're like, fucking figure it out. <laughs> you're not getting eight God bless yous out of me. America has a sneezing problem, you know? But people, some people don't want to do anything. They're like, look, man, if you ban guns, people are going to do crazy shit with a knife. And I'm like, cool, I'll take my chances with a knife. If a crazy guy came into a Walmart, like... I would do this. Oh, shit! <laughs> Oh, fuck, that was close. <laughs> Nobody go in this area right here. Just try to stay away from this area. You should be good. Does anybody have a rug we could wrap around this guy? <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Knife control. I think it's just too political. Both sides are too far apart on the issue, you know? Like, Republicans don't want anyone to take their guns away. Democrats want free health care for everyone. <laughs> I say we meet in the middle. I say if you get shot in a mass shooting, free health care for the rest of your life. <laughs> then it's like a Willy Wonka golden ticket situation. <laughs> you don't want it to happen, but it's like a nice silver lining. Like, <sighs> because you got to make it out alive to redeem your coupon, you know? <laughs> I like, you know, I love doing stand-up, but, like, sometimes audiences don't realize that, like, comics have real lives as well, and, like, sometimes, like, life shit will happen to us, and then we still have to do shows later that night, even though we haven't full, fully processed everything yet. Like, I remember one time I broke up with my girlfriend, and then I had a show later... And I was trying to talk about it on stage way too early. <laughs> you know, I was up here like, so let's break up with my girlfriend. <laughs> and, um, what's up with chicks? <laughs> it's like, I don't even love you anymore, am I right? <laughs> this guy knows what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, I was on the freeway the other day, and, uh, fuck, she, she, she loved the 405. <laughs> that was her favorite freeway. I always said the wrong thing in that relationship. Like one time she barfed in an Uber and in hindsight, I should have been like, are, are you okay? How are you feeling? But instead I just yelled, my rating. <laughs> <laughs> you learn shit by being in a relationship. Like I learned like ladies, you, you love to give us fake choices. You love to give your man fake choices. Like one time I was laying on the couch watching football and she walked in the room, she's like, do you want to keep watching TV? Or do you want to help me with the dishes? <laughs> no, it's totally up to you, whatever you want to do. <laughs> like, just tell me to wash the dishes and I'll wash the dishes. What would happen if, if I was like, I'm going to keep watching TV? <laughs> Thank you for the option though, it's very sweet of you, babe. <laughs> Some things I don't understand about women, like sometimes you'll invite us to like a boring thing but we love you, we could tell it means a lot to you, and you want us to go, and we love you, so we'll go and we'll support you, but that's not enough. You'll expect us to have a good time. <laughs> like, I went through the fucking thing, why is that not enough? That's like kidnapping someone and being like, just seems like you don't want to be here. <laughs> now when I put a bag on your face, you just had a frown, and I don't like it. Also, lingerie, I don't get that. That's more for you than it is for us. Like, we're just happy to be there. Every guy, like, if you're getting naked, no guy's like, that's your underwear? <laughs> Just tits? Okay. You know I love French lace. I can't even get hard with just regular tits, babe. You know this. I need, I need designs and buckles. But women love it. You'll be like, allow me to slip into something a little more comfortable. And you come back in like, hmm. Like what you see? <laughs> like, yeah, you want to take it off? 
you're such an asshole. I'm doing this for us. No, you're doing it for you, and that's okay. It'd be like if you're making out with a guy, like, mm -hmm, and he's like, allow me to slip into something. A little more comfortable. And then he comes back in, dresses in Ninja Turtle. <laughs> I know how much you love Donatello. <laughs> no, you love Donatello. I'm fucking trying, okay? I did this for us. I got the bow staff and everything, but you don't give a shit. <laughs> I'm getting old. I have a birthday coming up. It's weird when you're older and you have a birthday because you don't tell anybody, but then sometimes people find out the next day and they're like, oh, dude, is your birthday? How come, how come you didn't say anything? Because I'm a grown man, that's why. <laughs> Imagine if I did, if I was like, guys, <laughs> guys, G guess what tomorrow is? No, guess. No, it's wrong, guess again. It's my, it's my birthday. Like, no one gives a shit. It's weird getting old enough to see rap music change. Like every rapper has face tattoos now, which I guess is good motivation if you're trying to make it. <laughs> Cause like, then you have to make it. Like there's no plan B after face tats. Like why do you want to join the finance team? <laughs> well, we have your resume on file, so we'll, we'll let you know if anything opens up. Murderdog29 at Gmail, that's still the best way to, to, to contact you. Okay, and you put your SoundCloud on here for some reason. <laughs> I'll, yeah, I'll listen to some tracks. <laughs> like Post Malone. Post Malone's face looks like, you know how when you test a pen to see if there's ink still in it? <laughs> it's like he brought that in and was like, trace my face. <laughs> Another way and I'm getting older, it's like now when I watch commercials, I'm attracted to the moms <laughs> in the commercial. <laughs> that never used to happen. <laughs> I used to be focused on the fruit snacks. <laughs> but now I'm like, what's up with that mom? What's her story? <laughs> Like, MILF porn is really big right now. I don't know why. Can't it just be a 35-year-old woman having sex? Are guys that judgmental? Are they watching, like, 35 and no kids? <laughs> she needs to get her life together. I'll do it, but I'm not happy about this. How real does it have to be? Like at the end of the porno, is there a kid just standing in the doorway? <laughs> you were supposed to pick me up from soccer practice. <laughs> like, oh, fuck, it was real. <laughs> there's this other genre of porn where there's a hot real estate agent. There's a hot, and she, like she's showing a guy around a house, you know, like it's a three bedroom, three bath, and then they just, they end up fucking every time. But I'm at the age now where, like, I want to know more about the house. <laughs> I'm like, can you stop fucking it for two seconds? Is this hardwood or is this laminate? What's the HOA? I need them. They had a VR version of it. If I put those goggles on, they would be fucking over here, and I'd be like, so what year was this built? <laughs> like, oh yeah, so much cock. <laughs> oh yeah, they did use a lot of cock. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right, you guys have been a lot of fun. Thanks so much for coming out tonight. Thank you guys, let me pop in.
Fahim. <laughs> 